Without water, there's no life. We live in a country where there's either too much water, floods, or it's too dry, droughts. We've vastly decreased the ability of landscape to hold water. And what is the way to mitigate that? To bring the ecosystem back to life, we have to use the functions that are found in nature. Because if you look at ecology, in essence, it's community. It's symbiosis, you know, the bugs in the ground, everything is working together and helping each other to build this wonderful functioning landscape. As humans, we also have to follow that lead and work together, I think, to achieve that. So I'm Johannes Meyer. This is D'Antonio. We're about 20 k's east of Inverell in the Northern Tablelands. So our farm is mainly cattle grazing. There's also on the property an olive orchard, there's apple orchard, oranges, and a veggie garden that supplies all of our vegetables. So we're located in the Swanbrook catchment. Swanbrook is a fourth order stream running through the center of our property. Almost always runs, but that was decreasing in the millennial drought. Historically, it was a vibrant Murray cod stream that never stopped flowing. And talking to the neighbors that have been around for a longer time, that was a goal to get back to that. My name's Cody Law. This is our property, Yarrawa Park. My wife, Natalie, and I have been here 15 years. We're halfway between Inverell and Glen Innes. We're a grazing operation, and we also have a stock horse breeding business. The Swanbrook is only about four to 500 metres further down this valley. Following the 1819 drought, was as dry here as I've ever seen it. Then we had two really, really good years. In our grazing country, it was better, but down here lower, where we do seem to get a lot of runoff off these traditionally cultivated areas, and, and the banks were, were breaking and overflowing, and water was just rushing off the landscape every time it rained. And then we've got country up on the, above the skyline there that we've had dams dry now for six months. So the balance is not quite right. After a prolonged dry period in the New England, our Swanvale Landcare group members were coming together and discussing about you know, the changes over the last 10 or 15 years and the lack of water in the landscape. Our landholders were suffering, our biodiversity was also suffering. So what can we do as a group on ground to change and mitigate ourselves for when future drought comes that you know, we can hopefully be a lot better off together? And doing that as a group, it's much better than being an isolated farmer on your own. I've always been interested to hear about new ideas. That's why I was particularly impressed with uh, a lot of the work that Johannes has been doing because he's, had, he's kept data for 15 to 20 years on his you know, change in carrying capacity weight gains and even through periods of really dry times that you know I can remember he showed where they were still running more stock but had more ground cover and more water in their landscape and that was probably what sold me. I can still remember in 2007 we had 100 mil in the night and I woke up in the morning and walked outside the sun was just coming up and I could just see the hills just sheeting water down. It created more erosive gullies down this. This was before we'd done anything in this valley. Moved time ahead, you know, probably 10, 12 years, and we had a, an exactly the same event, and there was no water running anywhere. It just sank into the soil. The level contour banks, which hold water and allow it to soak in, it's allowing all plants to grow. The diversity and the building of soil carbon it's the riparian zones, protecting them from overgrazing of livestock and of bringing nutrients from low areas to high areas. All those things are tools. Since implementing these different practices and using these different tools, our production has more than doubled across the property. This is part of our Communities of Practice project. So this is us coming back into this amazing community after a beautiful field day and boot camp last year. What we have here is um, a culmination of our community's worth of effort to see Cody's dreams come true, would that be correct in saying? Well, we hope so. We hope so. <laughs> the Communities of Practice program 
is a project that we've been working on that upskills farmers in adopting landscape rehydration practices for drought resilience. We do this by restoring landscape function through repairing the small water cycle. So that's the movement, storage and cycling of water in our landscapes. This is one of five sites where we're running our Boots on Ground Day, demonstrating the practices that you can adopt on your property. We've got this gully system here. This is Cody's project site. As we're walking up, you just want to take a look at the condition that you can see in the gully itself, observing and tuning into that landscape and assessing the condition of a system is the first critical step before you do any project works. I'm really taken with the ideas of slowing the water down and retaining more water in our landscape and I think traditionally that was thought of if you held more water on say on my farm then the next person wouldn't get it but they've educated us to say well it's actually the opposite that the more you hold it in the more it hydrates here and will, you know, and then the, the slower the, the water will flow down the swan brook and then everybody gets access to more water. So re-diverting water from, from areas where it's rushing off and sending it around into areas that might traditionally be a little drier, um, that's something we'd definitely like to do. We're here today at Cody Law's place implementing a component of his property plan that he's been developing as part of this project. This is a community day where there's lots of other landholders have come along to observe and help to build these structures that we're putting into the creek. It's going to serve as a really good demonstration the different types of structures that you can place in a gully, uh, what those structures do and how you can build those structures yourself quite simply. You know, you can see where you might be able to just put something across a gully, create a bit of a pond there, which can then run water out onto the landscape in the paddock. Structures that we're building here today are aimed at slowing the flow of water, spreading it out, allowing it to soak in, and enabling nature to start recreating those functions and those processes. These natural patterns, these natural processes occur over whole catchments because landscapes, catchments don't just stop at the boundary fence and so uh, communities, landholders, neighbours, they need to work together. We want to look, assess the area and go, okay, where do we think we want our next intervention to go in? So that's our test. All right, so let's okay. go. Good luck. Let's go. I'm really excited for what's going to happen in our community. You know, we've got a group of people out here today being part of this project. So they're coming along to learn and take what they learn and some of those tools back to replicate what they're doing on those farms. And the ripple effect is going to go far and wide from this area. The work that we've done today has really demonstrated just how simple it is and the scale of it and you know you can make a lot of change just with a handful of people and half a day on the ground. One of the structures that we had a look at today was just the brush weir with just some timber pins in the ground and using some cut brush and layering that in. That's something really very simple and minimal intervention and we can take that home and use it straight away on the farm. It's been fantastic to see all of these groups come together with our local land services, our land care coordinators, our local leaders and Maloon staff all chipping in to support the landholder here getting a project off the ground. Our hope is that once this project is finished that this continues to grow. To achieve ecological resurgence on a property, on one farm, is just not enough. We need that to spill over and be farm after farm after farm so that all farms really are part of the same system. And that's really the vision for this catchment project, is that we can build that. You know, it's all about learning and doing that as a collaboration with a group of people, it fosters change. And that's what we need to help us be resilient in dry areas and resilient with climate change.